Hi all, Rick here with a video continuing our look into the Dominion vessels of Star Trek Deep Space Nine, this time looking onto the last of the three pure Dominion designs operated by the Jem'Hadar and Vorta. This is the battleship, not to be confused with the battle cruiser. It is also termed the Dominion or Jem'Hadar Dreadnought. As with the Dominion cruiser, the battleship was designed by John Eaves, although no physical model was built. This is because the episode in which it was introduced, Valiant, was to feature numerous close-up attack runs of the smaller Defiant-class vessel skimming the surface of the warship. Such shots would be impossible with a scaled physical model. The model was made by a digital muse based on Eaves' work, and would feature again in other fleet formations of the Dominion from then on. The pincers mirror the cruiser, and one design feature that I like is how everything angles inwards slightly. From the nacelles to the weapons pods, impulse engines, it all angles ahead of it, giving it it's the profile of something looming and closing in. This vessel may have existed before the Dominion War, but if it did, it was likely a concept only or in testing stages. It was constructed rapidly within the Alpha Quadrant, Cardassian space of 2374, and entered full-scale production that year, seeing multiple deployments all the way into the end of the war. This rapidity is what lends me to suspect it was drawn from pre-existing designs, as it seemed to not need extensive testing or shakedowns. It's as if the Dominion already knew the design would work. Nevertheless, as far as Starfleet knows, the ship was observed by Starfleet intelligence and then the crews of the USS Valiant in 2374, who took on a reconnaissance mission to collect scans of the ship. However, they believed they had also uncovered a weakness in the design and moved to engage the vessel, only to find their information lacking and barely escaped with their lives and the loss of the USS Valiant. This battleship easily outgunned and overpowered that Defiant class, which I remind you can weather a beating from a Borg cube. The battleship was designed as a pure combat ship, made to overwhelm and engage enemies' most powerful combatants, while acting as a command centre and flagship in larger engagements. For this reason, it was not actually suited for operations outside of wartime which might explain why it only emerged later in the conflict. It's a schematic the Dominion sits on until needed. Seriously, this vessel would suck at pretty much any other role as we'll see. The vessel is 1,284 metres long, making it one of the largest starships regularly seen, eclipsing the Dederodex class and later Starfleet Odyssey, unless you're looking at some other Dederodex scales which say it was larger than that, or taking the Jem'Hadar battleships of Cardassia's defence as the scale, in which case they're way, way bigger. But canonically it's 1,284 metres. Or at least based on Nog's estimates. That would make it around 1,050 metres wide and 325 tall. Ex Actress Sciencia has an entire breakdown on this topic, showing that it could be anywhere between this size and 3,300 metres because its scale varies so much even in its introductory episode. This is why I gave up judging by on screen appearances in Star Trek and instead go with what is stated. It was over 9 million metric tons and held a crew of 3,500, although it could hold far, far more. This number was caused by the strained Dominion numbers towards the end of the war. The vessel had the lower maximum warp factor than the smaller cruiser, at only just over warp 7, and it cruised at a mere 5-ish, which gave it the impression of a rather cumbersome ship. However, it is suggested that they can power well beyond this safe maximum limit if needed. Despite this, it was considered to be three times the power of a Galaxy class, which checks out considering a Defiant class had about that much oomph compressed into its energetic little frame, and it was obliterated by the Dominion Battlecruiser. This is in part due to the multiple power reactors that the Battlecruiser contained, not just a single core. For example, 
its Polaron-based weaponry too was supplied with its own backup power systems, so that even in complete power loss, the vessel could keep firing from its independent matter-antimatter reactors. There were large reserves of antimatter stored underneath its pylon wings. Similar reactors supplied backup power to its impulse drive too, and even backup shield grids for key areas of defence. It was armed with over 15 photon torpedo tubes, which I mentioned first as they were its preferred opening salvo, each grouped into threes, four clusters at the front and one aft. It had four main Polaron beam cannons on the pylons, and even with the Federation's developed resistance to the piercing effect of Polaron weapons, well, these phased cannons could still bleed through the shielding, as powerful as they were. A series of turrets along its midline with a point defence interception, and I have seen some estimates that put them up to 38 emitters, but I could not locate all of them. Its twin ion impulse drives are on the top of the vessel, as they were with the battle cruiser, and between them is a series of large thrusters used in conjunction to supplement its turn rate. Additionally, they maintained a series of hangars which were not utilised during the war, considering the additional time needed to manufacture them and the strain the Dominion was facing towards the end. In later appearances, in non-canon sources however, they are fully utilised, and can even house a Jem'Hadar attack ship alongside smaller craft. While the sensor systems were not a priority, they were particularly good at close-range analysis of a vessel's systems, and would use this to devise a plan of attack. It therefore relied on other Dominion ships that were deployed alongside it to assist in other roles, where it then coordinated with them. The Dominion battleship was designed to destroy anything the Federation could marshal. Quite simply, it was there to destroy anything it encountered, a lesson in excessive force. This was born of the frustration of the Dominion in battling the Federation, and it went on longer than expected, and it's exactly the same sort of mentality which led to the female founder issuing the order to just kill off all the Cardassians. This is what the Dominion looks like when it stops pretending to be nice. It was so dedicated to its single-minded task of destruction that, although it could lay waste to an entire solar system or two, its own sensor range was limited to only 1.3 light-years, laughably short-sighted. This is supplemented by a flanking of battle cruisers and attack ships, with the battleship acting as a command flagship that engaged the less manoeuvrable cruisers like the Galaxy or Klingon Nekva. It also excelled at extermination missions, and one such vessel single-handedly passed through Cardassian rebel systems, removing 18 bases across numerous planets. Its introduction into the theatre of war necessitated new tactics from Starfleet, which fortunately adapted. So that is the fearsome Dominion Jem'Hadar battleship. As far as Apocrypha suggests, there were only 27 of these ships constructed, and those that survived the Battle of Cardassia returned through the wormhole to Dominion space. It's unknown what happened to these ships after this, with the tempering of the Founders' hostility at the end of the conflict. So thanks for watching this breakdown on the Dominion battleship, and until the next lore video, thanks again, and goodbye.